Use a picture to answer the question. The picture shows the, the, the racetrack. What graph models the estimated speed of the car toy as it moves through the racetrack? So we are going to have the, the speed of the racetrack right here is zero. This is going to be a very high speed. Here it's going to be a low speed. Here it's going to be another high speed. Here it's going to be a low speed. And then it's going to tail up just a little bit. So we need one that starts at zero. Right now, we can eliminate this one and this one because they don't start at zero. Um, we all know that speed does not, <laughs> you do not go at a constant rate as you're accelerating down a hill. So you know this cannot be the right answer. And so it has to be B. The United States exported approximately three, sorry, 30 million metric tons of wheat over the entire year. What is the number of metric tons of wheat written in scientific notation. Well, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. D. Which expression is equivalent? So first things first, we know that we have to multiply, when you have an exponent outside the parentheses, you have to multiply exponents. So we have 9 to the negative 16. But you're not allowed to have 9 to the negative 16. You can't have a negative exponent. And we know that a to the negative x power is equal to 1 over a to the positive x power. So this has to be equal to 1 over 9 to the 16th. B. 13. Right in standard notation. So we have 5 point and we go 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, I went the wrong way. That is embarrassing. So I know that my answer is going to be a smaller number because I have a negative exponent, which is going to create a decimal or a fraction, not a negative number. So we go over 1, 2, 3, 4. Put in my zeros. And so the answer is we have 1, 2, 3. It is B. Good job, Anya. The third grader got it before the answer was revealed. Which statement is true about the square root of 2 and pi over 2? OK. They're both irrational numbers. We know that. Since half of 2 is 1 and half of 3 is 2.5, then the square root of 2 is less than pi over 2. Square root does not mean half. Um, so since, since they are using half here, we know this is not mathematically correct. Since the square root of 2 is slightly less than 1.5, and half of pi is slightly more than 1.5, this, this sounds pretty good. So it's C? It, I think it's C, because the uh, square root of 2 is like 1.4, and it's a... Uh, Irrational, so it goes on forever. But, anyways, C is the correct answer. Yeah. It's helpful if you know what the square root of 2 is, though. I don't know what the square root of 2 is. You don't know what the square root of 2 is. Well, well, but you know that the square root symbol does not mean divide by 2. So, right away, you can get rid of those two. And we know that the pi is 3.14, which is not slightly less than 2. And, anyways, it hasn't switched around, anyways, because we know. That it E, this right right there would be enough to know that it can't be right. All right, 15. Use the number line to answer the question. Which point on the number line is the best approximation for the square root of 6? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 9 is equal to 3. So we know that the square root of 6 is going to be somewhere in between here. So we know z and y cannot be true. Also, we know that the square root of 6 is going to be a lot closer to the square root of 4 than the square root of 9. So therefore, the only possible answer is w. 16. Which pair of transformations moves quadrilateral 1 to quadrilateral 2? All right. So I've noticed that first that it is oriented in a different direction. So that means there's some sort of reflection that had to happen. 
that, that is far more likely than a rotation. So um, I know that the, this rotation is probably not a good idea. Likewise, rotating 180 degrees would put it way over here. Oh. Or reflecting over the x-axis would put it here, and then rotating 180 degrees would bring it here. So we know that can't be right either. So, so it's either A or D. So let's look what they say. Reflect it over the line y equals negative 3. So the y equals negative 3 is going to be this line right here. So if I reflect it over that angle, I'll end up with a shape that comes down here and up here and it'll look something like this. And then it says reflect or rotate it 90 degrees. Well, if I rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise, that would swing it up here. That that actually might be the one. So So where is my thing? I'm looking for my little there it is. Rotation, it's not rotation. So I'll put it about the origin. And I am going to rotate this and see what I get. Counterclockwise 90 degrees. That looks really close, folks. So a 16 is probably going to be A. 16 is going to be A. And 16 is, in fact, A. All right. Moving on. Misha asked 10 different co-workers how many people and pets are living in their homes. She used the responses to create the scatter plot shown. And so we have people and pets. Which statement is true about the number of people and pets living in homes of the co-workers? The no as the number of people living in the home increases, the number of pets increases. Well, I, I don't know about that because as we have three, four, and five, we have this box here, or this, I mean, it stays fairly constant at one. You have these two out people who love their animals. Um, as the number of people living in the home increases, the number of pets decreases. So that's clearly not true. As the number of, sorry, as the number of people living in the home decreases, the number of pets decrease. And there's no relationship between them. I'm willing to go with there's no relationship between the two. Because it really does seem that people either have one or none pets, and then you have four people have a little extra pets. We, at our family, we have two pets. We have a ball python, which is Anya's. Her name is Scales. And we have a bearded dragon, which is Campbell's. And his name is Buddy. Uh, 18. What is the value of that? Okay. So if you're, the rule is, you add the exponents if the base is the same. So, so in this case, we have 5 to the 4th plus negative 6, which is equal to 5 to the negative 2nd. But remember, you can't have the negative exponent, which is, so this is equal to 1 over 25, or 1 over 5 squared. And that is that one. The reason why you're getting so many negative exponent problems is because uh, scientific notation is becoming a bigger deal as math and science are getting emphasized. The diagram shows triangle JKL and triangle LMNP. Which same is true about the slope of JL and MP? Well, the slope of... <laughs> it's the same line, folks. So the slope should be the same. The slope is the same as because it's similar to... Well, I'm not sure if they're similar or not. Let's find out. So we have 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So this has a slope of negative 1 because I went down 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, 
Oh, wait a second. So that's seven. And this was six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so this was three, and this was, uh, that's a half, not one. So it's a half. Campbell. So one, two, three, and a half. So does six over seven equal three over 3.5? The answer is yes, because I have a scale factor of two. So therefore, this is true. All right, number 20.